Okay, hello. Um, so we're gonna uh, start now. So uh, today we're gonna be covering k-means clustering. Uh, let me just post the attendance form. Okay. So k-means clustering. Uh, so that's the algorithm we're gonna cover today. Uh, it's something called an unsupervised algorithm. So uh, what that means is, if you look at the past uh, past algorithms that we've covered, they all have the labels already given. So we already know the answer to all of the the uh, data, right? So all, all of the data is already labeled. So we're basically trying to train the data on data that we already know about, that know the answers to. In this case, we're gonna have data that we don't know the answer to. So uh, the the algorithm is gonna have to group the the data into clusters itself, which is why we get the name k-means clustering. Now, k-means clustering is just one example of the unsupervised learning algorithm, but uh, so uh, where it could be used is, for example, if you want to differentiate the DNA tests, uh, you could use that, and then for fraud detection, it's also used. So let's get into how it works. So first, we have our data set, um, as like in all of the machine learning algorithms. Um, then with your data set, you're going to have centroids. So uh, again, this is unclassified data. So you can see all of them are purple, right? So uh, that means we don't know what class they are. Then these centroids, so the only thing that we do know is that we're going to separate the data into two different classes, right? So we have two centroids, centroid 1 and centroid 2. So what we do from here is we separate the data based on whatever is closest to the centroids. So anything that's closest to centroid 1 is going to be blue or classified as class 1. And anything close to centroid 2 is going to be classified as uh, class 2. And it's going to be play, uh, it's going to be red in this case. Okay. So then what we do is we're going to shift the centroids to be at the center of the um, of these uh, data points that are in those classes. So now the blue centroid is at the center of all of the blue points, and the red one is at the center of all the red points. So then what we do here from here is again we reclassify all the points based on which um, centroid is closest to. So here we go. Uh, then again, we can realign the centroids to be at the center of the data set. So now you can see that we started off with just a plain data set without any classifications, and now we have formed two clusters from this uh, that we can use to classify any new data. So we can determine whether this is in class one or class two. Um, so we went from a data set of just some unclassified values to two different classes that we can differentiate between. So let's learn how to actually uh, implement this algorithm, uh, so k-means clustering. So uh, let me go ahead and I'm going to create, uh, let me zoom in. Um, okay, okay, I think that should be good enough. Right? Uh, okay, so I'm going to create a directory called, uh, I don't know, k-means uh, clustering. And let's see into that directory. Okay. So now we're going to create a file called uh, we're going to create a file called k means clustering dot pi. Okay. So uh, I can just go ahead and shoot. Uh, let's get rid of that. Um, okay. So let's add our import statement. So we're going to need. Uh, so we're going to need matplotlib. Uh, OK, and then we're also going to need, uh, so we're going to need SK uh, learn module. We're going to need uh, the k-means clustering model. And then we're also going to create, uh, we're going to also need some ra uh, random, so we'll use random. Okay. So first, uh, sorry, we also need uh, we also need NumPy. So okay. So now let's create. So we're gonna create random data. So data equals np dot random dot uniform. Uh, so we're gonna go from we're gonna uh, go from zero to ten, and we're, the shape of the data is gonna be a hundred by two. Okay. So that's our data. So now let's take a look at this data. So, uh, okay. And it's going to be at 
dot part so we'll put it over here okay okay so uh, what we did with here was that we so we have a hundred by two so the uh, we're basically going to have a bunch of ordered pairs right so a hundred ordered pairs uh, so right here we're going to take all the x's and here we're going to take all the y's and we're just going to plot that in dot plot so uh, that'll look like this as you can see it's just a bunch of random values um, okay so now let's actually go ahead and cluster these so we'll say we'll create a model so and so now we have to uh, determine how many clusters we want so let's start off with just two right? uh, Okay, uh, and then now we'll just fit our data. Uh, the model will fit the model to our data. Uh, okay, so now we want to visualize our data. So what we'll do is we'll just create um, random data and uh, have our model predict the points. And then based off of that, we'll be able to see how it classifies the things. So uh, for x in range, 1,000. Um, so we'll create a thousand different points. So we'll, then we'll create a variable called test point, and it's going to be np dot random dot uniform, uh, and then it's going to it's going to be from zero to ten, and this time the shape is going to be one by two because we just want uh, we just need uh, one single point. So then we'll take the test point. Uh, and we'll plot that point on our graph. Okay, and that, okay. So now we're gonna, so we're gonna plot that point. Uh, but we also wanna, so we wanna color, the way we're gonna visualize this is by color coding it. So I'm gonna create, uh, actually I'll just copy paste this, um, Okay, I'm gonna uh, paste. Uh, oh, right, okay. okay, there we go. So I just pasted this function here. Uh, what it does is it just creates a random hexadecimal color. Uh, so you can see it just um, has these values. These are possible characters it can choose from. Uh, then we just have the color. Uh, it starts with the um, uh, hash symbol. Then we just use six of these random characters to create a random color. Um, hopefully, two of the colors won't be the same, but you know, most likely it won't. So we'll just use this. So color equals. Uh, and actually, we'll go ahead and just do the prediction before. So we'll say uh, prediction equals uh, model dot predict. Uh, and we'll add, or we'll put a test point in here. Uh, test point. Test point. Okay. Uh, so we'll do that, and then the shape that it's going to return in is going to be. Um, so it's um, going to be like one, and then so like it's going to be like. Okay, here, let me show you in this comment. So it'll be like uh, this, and then the prediction right here. So uh, we need to get the actual value from right here. So there we go. Okay, so we've gotten that prediction. Um, so now we're gonna put, uh, so we're gonna also create this dictionary right here, uh, just to keep track of which colors we've used and uh, for which classes. So uh, for, we're gonna create the color, um, for each class, uh, okay, and based on the number of clusters that there are, okay. So then we can go ahead and just plug in our prediction in here. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to plot it in the color based on uh, which class it falls under. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So this is our. Uh, random data it's going to try and cluster this into two different clusters so if we so the model is running uh, 
That's weird. Oh, I didn't do the show. Okay. Okay, there we go. Now we can actually run it again. And so that's that's our data. So we're going to try to um, split it into two different clusters. And okay, this is a poor choice of colors. But if you look closely, you'll see that this is a darker green, this is a lighter green, and it split kind of like this. Uh, let's see if we can do that again to get better colors so you can see that better. Uh, so that's that one, and then. Nope, it's. I don't know why it's picking this colors, these colors every time. Uh, okay. Anyway, so uh, let's try more clusters. So uh, let's try like five clusters. So now it's going to take this data, split it into five different clusters. There we go. Now you can actually kind of see the differences. So one, two, three, four, five. Um, but also we can, so here you can see the different clusters. Um, but you can also go ahead and have it to where uh, you, we can also plot the uh, centroids. So you can see where those are. Um, so four point in. Uh, so to get the centroids, you say cluster centers. Okay. So we're gonna plot these points. Uh, okay. Okay. And we're gonna put, uh, plot them as triangles, and we'll just uh, plot them uh, as black because. Uh, because it'll, um, because the background is white, so it'll most likely be visible. So okay, again, this data is going to be split into five different clusters, and here we go. Uh, and if you look closely right here, you can see there's a triangle right here. So that's the centroid of this, uh, this brownish cluster. There's another one over here. This is this. I think it's black cluster. Uh, this one right here is this. I don't know blue cluster, kind of dark blue, uh, and this one is this light brownish color, and the pink one right here is the centroid right here. Uh, I can also see, zoom in a little bit, like, okay, we can see the cluster right here, uh, and then, yeah. So, okay, that's, that's, that's basically it. Um, also, so if you want so uh, I would challenge you guys to try and implement this from scratch if you can, uh, without using the scikit-learn. Uh, only using well, you guys can use NumPy and uh, uh, Matplotlib and like the built-in Python libraries and stuff. But uh, if you guys could uh, try and uh, create the algorithm from scratch using just plain Python and NumPy and Matplotlib, uh, that would be pretty cool. So, yeah. Uh, anyways, that's all. Uh, have a nice day and we'll see you next week hopefully. <laughs>